morning it's time to wake up and smell that delicious Disney failure. Hey there fellow nostalgia time travelers, welcome to Chrononaut, the channel that takes you on a journey through the mind-bending magnitudious multiversal maze of mischief, mockery, and mayhem. In the realm of entertainment, Disney has long been considered an unstoppable force, synonymous with magic, creativity, and financial success. However, recent developments paint a different picture, one that has fans and investors alike questioning the once unassailable empire. Is there a problem, people? We were just discussing uh, ideas of what to do with the new Prince Eric movie. Put a chick in it, make her gay! From streaming setbacks to box office blues and declining theme park attendance, the House of Mouse is facing challenges on multiple fronts. In this in-depth exploration, Chrononaut delves into the intricate web of issues plaguing Disney and whether Disney can ever recover from... Kathleen Kennedy, who must have watched Tropic Thunder and thought to herself that she definitely wanted to go full retard. You know, there were times when I was doing Jack that I actually felt retarded, like really retarded. Dang. In a weird way, I had to sort of just free myself up to believe that it was okay to be stupid or dumb. To be a moron. Yeah. To be moronical. Exactly. To be a moron. An imbecile. Yeah. Not the dumbest motherfucker. Disney is bleeding money everywhere, in every aspect of its business. In its pursuit of woke identity politics, it has gone full retard. It's like, yeah, yeah, right? You was farting in bathtubs and laughing your ass off. Never go full retard. Wait, about what? You're serious? You don't know. <laughs> Everybody knows you never go full retard. Number one. In the world of streaming, Disney has gotten lost in its own magic kingdom. Disney Plus, the highly anticipated streaming service which was launched way back in 2019, was expected to be a game changer for Disney. However, the recent quarterly report reveals a completely different narrative. A staggering loss of more than 11 billion dollars. That's a billion with a B. Disney had quite a thing going there for a while, especially with the MCU, but unfortunately they listened to the whiniest, wokest supporting losers and didn't do what fans wanted. Go woke, go broke, as they say, and boy has Disney embodied that phrase. Because democracy basically means government by the people, of the people. For the people. But the people are retarded. In the most recent quarter alone, Disney Plus faced a daunting $512 million loss, leaving investors and industry analysts questioning the sustainability of the streaming giant. Disney bet big on girl power woke identity politics and it failed miserably. Number two, subscribers are leaving the Disney Plus platform like Andy Dufresne leaving the Shawshank Redemption. Now Disney is trying to shift strategies. And in, in a surprising move, Disney's CEO Bob Iger admitted to creative missteps and announced a strategic shift, choosing quality over quantity, supposedly. Iger says he aims to produce fewer films and streamline operations. Well, we will see. He is echoing a strategy employed way back in 2005 when he first took the reins. But recent job cuts of thousands of employees, including the elimination of animation positions, highlight the company's commitment to a leaner, more focused approach. The question remains, can Disney recapture its former magic in the ever-evolving landscape of streaming. Number three, Disney cannot stop losing. Unbelievable box office blues and a string of incredible flops from blockbusters to bombs, from billion dollar movies 
to Chump Change. Once synonymous with box office success, Disney Studios is experiencing a tumultuous period. Recent releases such as Lightyear and Strange World failed to captivate audiences in 2022, and a lot of movies that have come out recently, like Captain Marvel, were total effing failures. Everyone hated it, and DC's not doing any better with its crap Aquaman 2 movie. And even the iconic Marvel Cinematic Universe faced a setback with all of the movies that it's come out with recently. And, you know, the Marvels had the worst opening box office weekend in MCU history, guys. It's it's bad. Things are looking bad. Uh, analysts were also left completely unimpressed as The Little Mermaid and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania fell well short of projected ticket sales. They are losing billions of dollars. Number four, the financial freefall in the studio business. The financial woes extend beyond critical reception. Obviously, critics and fans alike are hating on these movies. Sometimes loser critics give shit movies good reviews because they're woke losers who are more focused on critical consciousness than they are on anything involving quality plot lines or stories. But all of that nonsense is seeping into Disney's studio business, including the content sales and licensing divisions. Operating income losses have become a recurring theme, with the most recent quarter reporting a loss of $149 million, attributed to the performance of The Haunted Mansion. The last positive operating income gain gain in this division dates back to the second fiscal quarter of 2022, which means that's the last time they made money. And it's raising concerns about the sustainability of Disney's studio adventures. Number 5. Disney World's Woes. A decline in the not-so-magic kingdom. Many people are suffering from incredible levels of anxiety at Disney, especially if they're concerned about losing their jobs. Which, is, that part said, if they're lower-level employees. The executives, though, they deserve to lose their jobs. That's undebatable, in my opinion. While Disney World has long been the epitome of enchantment, recent reports indicate a decline in attendance, plummeting by as much as 15% this year. The once magical kingdom is now facing challenges posed by high entry costs and stiff competition. That's not really it, though. People keep saying that, oh, it's stiff competition that's causing the decline of Disney. No way. It's pushing woke nonsense in their parks. But this is leaving Disney enthusiasts questioning the allure of the iconic theme park. Obviously, the prices are incredibly high, so if you're pushing politics... It's unsurprising that people no longer want to go. Number six, blaming the woke wave of nonsense. Even Disney CEO Bob Iger has admitted to shareholders that the politics have gotten a little out of control. Obviously, their woke critical theory nonsense is quite niche. The average American does not want to hear that. So it doesn't really work well for a company that wants to appeal to the masses. So the plan is to now shift towards entertainment as opposed to political messaging. And hopefully that's true because it it has quite negatively impacted the company overall. The ideological shift has prompted a broader discussion about Disney's ability to navigate the evolving landscape of audience preferences and societal expectations. Because again... What in the heck is a modern audience? That's just some nonsense that woke losers came up with. You come in, you point out how how screwed up the politically correct is, and then there's just something worse, more pernicious, which is this woke movement, which is basically saying that America is is endemically racist. I don't know, even even the woman's soccer team, the woman with the purple hair, she wasn't a fan of mine. She said negative things and then she lost. Yes. Because woke means you're a loser. Right. Everybody ultimately loses with woke. And I'll tell you, I'm watching parents in Virginia and parents, mm-hmm. they're tired of They're it. They don't want it. it. They're finally getting it. Yeah. Number seven, the road ahead. Can Disney regain its magic? 
In response to the current challenges, Disney is embarking on a series of strategic maneuvers. The de decision to make fewer films focus on quality and reduce costs echoes a playbook that served the company well in the past. With upcoming releases such as Marvel's Deadpool 3, and my goodness, I hope they don't mess that up, apparently Ryan Reynolds is having issues with Disney because they want to reduce the level of violence, but it shouldn't be a problem since they're going to release it, I believe, under Fox and not under Disney. Uh, Pixar's Inside Out sequels and the prequel to The Lion King titled Mufasa. Uh, Disney aims to recapture box office success. However, I wouldn't bet on it. In reality, they're just trying to continue to capitalize on existing IP and completely avoid any soy source, any any semblance of creativity whatsoever. However, the success of these endeavors remains uncertain in the face of a changing entertainment landscape. Number eight, streaming profitability and cost-cutting measures. Disney's streaming arm remains a critical concern as they release show after show that continues to fail. Despite losing over 11.7 million subscribers worldwide in the last quarter, Disney CEO Bob Iger is optimistic about turning things around, probably because he lives in a magic kingdom that only exists in his head. Shifting the focus from subscriber growth to making more money from existing subscribers, Disney has raised the monthly price for access to an ad-free version of Disney+. Plus. Additionally, the company plans to slash costs by an additional $2 billion, building on a previously announced reduction of $5.5 billion dollars which included thousands of job cuts because they are losing money hand over fist. People do not like Disney content. That much is obvious. In summation, Disney is navigating uncharted waters. Never have they gone on this incredibly extremist left-wing political bent. In the face of streaming losses, box office setbacks, and theme park challenges, Disney stands at a crossroads. The road to recovery necessitates strategic recalibration, a commitment to quality over quantity. As much as I used to love Marvel, at least for the first decade, and I, and, and I would like more content that's, uh, of the Disney destruction. Stay tuned for the latest developments in the ever-evolving world of entertainment. Yeah, well... That's just like uh, your opinion, man.